All right, it's another day here working on the bus. Been making some pretty good progress the last couple of days. I've probably seen the video of me working on the interior framing of the bus, and that took quite a bit of time, but um, also in the meantime was working on getting the wires pulled and plumbing installed. So I'll just show you what that looks like. I didn't really film any of that part of it just because uh, like anything being a one-off uh, build, there's really no plans or blueprints to follow. So I have to fi figure it all out as I go. Uh, and it takes uh, quite a bit of thinking time in between uh, doing the work. So uh, there would be a lot of just me kind of standing around and thinking about how I want to run things that made the most sense. Uh, it just seemed like it'd be easier just to show you what I did after I already uh, hopefully figured it out. But um, you can see I've got some of the wiring loom back up over here. This is the original stuff from, that was in the bus uh, that I re-ran back through here after cleaning up the wire. And this is for uh, running lights that are that are up here that are still going to be functional um, for the bus. And then they, uh, they run down into this electrical compartment down here that I had already cleaned up. And that loom runs all the way to the back of the bus uh, all the way back there you can kind of see it but um i've been working on pulling all my circuits for <clears throat> for the bus here uh primarily going to be running off of a 12 volt system like a standard camper usually is so all the lighting's 12 volt um, with the occasional outlets that i put in here which are 120 volts uh, these are where you know people can plug in their phone chargers uh, that type of thing there so i have those here occasionally just a very, just a few amount of those but i ended up putting in this this is kind of my looks like a little bit of a rat's nest of wires coming into here but uh it'll be all tidied up after i determine that's uh where everything's going to go at and, and run down but uh, i've got my electrical panel here the rv electrical panel so it's your split function like normal you got your 120 volt circuit over on this side 12 volt circuit over on this side uh got a converter in the back back here that will uh, take the 120 volts, convert it to 12 volts, and uh, be able to power up all the lighting circuits that I have here on the bus. I do have a battery for it uh, as well, which is typical for these camper systems or schoolie systems. I'm not doing the full solar build, so I don't have a cluster or a bank of batteries, but uh, that's just because I didn't want to make it uh, crazy. It's not going to be an off-grid schoolie, so I, there's no reason to invest the money into that. But I also have to finish up this is a bathroom vent fan that I put in rather than cutting another hole in the ceiling over here for a potential leak um, I picked up this marine fan right here I'm just going to vent it into the, the bathroom to be able to pull moisture uh, and smells out of the bathroom and then I'll probably vent it either out the sidewall here or I'll go down through the floor uh, and let it vent down below the bus uh, and see how that see what the, the best route is for that um, but got my mixture of wires kind of running through the ceilings, the walls where switches are all going to be at, um, more outlets here in the future. The toilets set, well, it's sitting in place where it's going to be at, and uh, shower base is here also, and that's where it'll be set. I have all the holes drilled down into the bottom. So I have the shower base installed here, and then I have the toilet plumbing. It was kind of difficult to try to figure out exactly how I wanted to run this because I didn't want to have anything going below below the floor underneath the bus um, for freezing potentials or um, having to rub against something or break or whatever. So what I decided is I'm going to run it along the floor right in front of the door here. I'll put a piece of uh, trim or something to encapsulate it. It's not going to be a real tall, just something real shallow to cover it. Uh, then it'll wrap around and tie into the toilet and that would be the really the only plumbing that's uh, kind of odd i guess in this thing but the door it's not going to be used um, probably never really uh, so it was just more of keeping it there for aesthetics for being a, a bus emergency door and so i wasn't too worried uh, that there would be something right there for uh, you know for the plumbing to have to go from the the back wall over here to where the toilet's at and uh, well, that's kind of it for I have the shower stuff here I have to hook up Then I've got the plumbing wall here where my plumbing runs down this little curly cue that wraps around is going to tie into the hose connection port that's in the side wall there I haven't connected it yet because I still have to foam this area uh, I have venting that has to come up through these holes here and then that will go up through the ceiling here and out uh, that will vent the tanks that are down below 
for uh, odors and just proper ventilation on that. And I did end up running my lines up over the top here. So they'll be sandwiched in between the foam that's already here on the ceiling and then another layer uh, and then the ceiling, but they'll be, it'll be able to get heat uh, from inside the bus to keep those uh, from potentially freezing if it does get really cold out. Uh, plus, I also put low point drains in down here and over on this side. So that way I'll be able to drain the bus down and winterize it if I ever needed to. Because um, I decided to put the water heater, which is larger size one, over on this side of the bus. Um, just because it didn't really work over here where I ended up putting all my electrical. That made a lot more sense to put that over here versus... Uh, having the water heater and then trying to do something else with the electrical um, but then a fridge will be sitting right next to it uh, it's just kind of sitting here right now and then i have to build out all the cabinetry and counters that go in here and this will be kind of like the the area where there's microwave coffee makers all that good stuff that goes in here the two bunks two bunk uh, build outs here so i got four bunks in total that we have in here these spots that are under here are going to be left open on both sides for right now for storage bags can slide underneath there. Um, but I do have wires back over here because eventually if I decide to put a freshwater tank in here, I can mount it underneath this side of the bunk. Um, and they'll have the wires there to power the pump. Plus then I can just tie it right into my plumbing that's already right here anyway um, for my freshwater system to, to uh, utilize a pump and uh, holding tank versus uh, doing the city connection that's to it. Then we just walk back into here and just uh, the bedroom area has pretty much enough room for <clears throat> excuse me for a queen size bed to go in here and a couple of outlets some lights on the ceilings and yeah pretty basic didn't want to take up a lot of room in the bedroom I figure these are just going to be sleeping spaces and then people will uh, be out during the day doing their thing. And then we are going to utilize two of the bus seats. I have to build, fabricate some brackets to extend it off the wall by about an inch uh, that they'll be bolted back into their original mounting spots. And then I have to uh, carve out the floor here and build some stands for, some steel stands for it to go on so that they'll mount back down through uh, the floor and to the rails that are down below for um, support, kind of how they were originally installed in here. And then we'll put the dining table right in through here and try to at least use something that's that we have here on the bus um, along with we decided we're going to try to utilize all the old metal ceiling that was in here i might have to cut down some of the sides a little bit because this three quarter inch strapping that's up here will uh, cut down on the distance that the uh, exterior or the old metal will, will cover so i'm gonna see i'll try a piece out and see what happens with that um, and then there'll be the end cap that goes right here up on this area and we're gonna mount i'm gonna mount the heat pump indoor unit the head unit right here in the center and route the lines down over here somehow still have to figure all that part of it out um, but we figured having the air conditioning blowing into this larger space here where people potentially be gathering and the largest heat load would be more beneficial than putting it all the way in the back and then having all the cool or warm air just confined to that single bedroom back there. Um, people do it either way. I figured if I did it up front here where we have the largest load, <clears throat> we could always put some fans or put a fan to blow it down the, uh, the hallway here to the, to the sleeping area and uh, it'll work out all right uh, that way too. So. Uh, I guess I could always add a second one if I needed to, but power is a concern if I do that. So we'll just try it with the one and see what happens. And then I got to build this half, finish putting this half wall in here with the original bus rail, handrail. Then I'm going to put back on there just as a little bit of an aid for people to get in and out of here. And of course I got to finish the door up too. And then I'm going to sound dead in this area here and reinstall the rubber flooring and steps uh, all the original stuff that's going to go in here is going to go back or that wasn't here is going to go back in here and i haven't determined what i'm going to do with this old cabinet heater space might build that out to be um 
I don't know, little shelves or something in there. And then obviously put the dash and everything back in here too. But all that has to be cleaned up and, and painted. But I'll take you out here and show you. I still have to paint the bus yet too and redo the windows. But it's starting to warm up. So we're hopefully going to be able to do that here soon. But out here in this cabinet, this is that emergency door right here that leads you right into the bathroom. But under here is where I have going to be mounting the black tank so I am also going to put the battery down in here too that way it's out of the living space and kind of outside here I guess Chuck wants to check everything out too but there's also another tank back over there for the gray water um, the toilet you can see is going to come basically straight down into uh, this tank and then there's a hole back there for the gray water for the shower and the, the kitchen sink to uh, come down into that tank as well and then I have to figure out how, what are you doing, Chuck? <laughs> Whatever. I guess I have to figure, <laughs> I guess he wants to make sure that it's all right. Bye. Anyway, I'll have to get the plumbing to come out through this sidewall right here. I'm trying to do this one-handed and whatever but uh, the tanks are gonna have to be tied together to a drain valve where they'll be able to hook to the sewer and, uh, and um, you know, drained out when when needed for that i do have to add um tank monitoring system to the tanks then too so that i can tell when they're full and uh, know if i have to do uh emptying on those prior to a person's uh checkout just depends on how much usage there is and this is where the water connection is on the outside right now and then my electrical connection i don't have in here yet but that's going to go somewhere in this general area so everything Connection wise, they'll be on the driver's side like they typically are on most units uh, for hooking up. But I'm gonna have to get on working on the foaming inside of there today. Uh, the, the rigid foam that I have to cut and put in there. I have all that in the barn and I'll probably uh, work on that over the next couple of days. So that way I can start getting wall paneling and ceiling panels put up in here and just keep moving forward on, on progress on this. So. Just wanted to give you a quick little tour of what's going on and we'll just keep moving forward.